Genesis recounts a great flood in the distant past, but a surface level reading of an English translation implies the flood was global, meaning the entire world would have been covered in water. But is this really what the text is saying, or is a regional flood all that is being described? The idea of the flood of Noah was a global event is a common belief among many Christians today, but it is highly rejected by the scientific community. Because of this, many Christians reject mainstream science and many scientists say the Bible contains falsehoods. But I don't think this tension is necessary. The text of Genesis does not definitively say the flood of Noah was a global event and could just be describing a regional flood. First, let's all be honest, there is not a person alive who can claim they take the entire account in every verse of the flood story literally. That is just impossible, and even global flood proponents have to admit many verses in Genesis 6-9 are hyperbolic. Genesis 6-13 claims that God said he would make an end of all flesh, but that is not true since every creature in the ark survived, and so did all the sea creatures nor did God literally destroy the earth. Genesis 8-2 says the windows of the heavens were closed. But even global flood proponents realize they are not literal windows in the sky. Genesis 9-2 says, The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. But obviously this is not literally the case for every animal. Have you ever met a dog or my cat who thinks he's a dog and isn't afraid of any human? There are several other verses we have to admit are hyperbolic. So there are no people who take the entire flood account literally. Thus we have to admit it doesn't necessarily record a global flood, but instead could just be explaining various events in hyperbolic and metaphorical language, like with these verses we went over. This can be seen elsewhere. In Genesis 41, it says, All the earth came to buy grain from Joseph. But obviously the Chinese, Australians, or Mesoamericans didn't travel to Egypt to buy grain. Nor did Jacob. He just sent his sons to buy grain. So this is obviously hyperbole to just recount that many people from the regional area came to Egypt to buy grain. In Genesis 14, it says the enemies took all the possessions of Sodom. So even the clothes in the houses? This is obviously hyperbole to mean Sodom was ransacked but they probably literally didn't carry everything out of Sodom and leave all the people bare naked. So Genesis contains several verses that contain hyperbole and exaggeration, and that might be all that is happening in the flood story. However, some try to argue that the flood account says the tops of the mountains were covered by 15 cubits, so this must mean the entire earth was covered. But Michael Heiser notes the word is used elsewhere for a hill and at times a mountain that trees grow on and trees don't grow on very high mountains. So it could just be referring to the point of view of Noah, and he simply is noting all the high hills or mountains from his viewpoint in his local region were covered. If the flood was global, it is not like he would have floated around the whole earth to verify there were no mountains visible. Some also suggest that because the flood account uses the phrase, all the earth, it must be referring to a global event. But this is clearly not the case in other places in scripture. Genesis 2 says the Pishon River flows around the whole land of Havilah. Does that mean every square foot of Havilah contains the Pishon River? The same is said of the Gihon River. But clearly in both cases, it doesn't mean the rivers touch every piece of that region. Genesis 13.9 records a conversation between Abram and Lot. And Abram says, is not the whole land before you? It is clear they are not looking at the whole earth. The Americas or Antarctica are not before them. It is just a reference to the whole regional land before them. Again, there are numerous other places where this Hebrew phrase used to denote the whole earth doesn't refer to the entire globe. So just because this phrase shows up in the flood account, that doesn't mean it refers to the whole planet. What about 2 Peter? Many argue this epistle speaks of a global flood. But that is not necessarily true, 
In fact, 2 Peter 2.5 qualifies the flood by saying it came upon the world of the ungodly, which means it could just be referring to the world of the ungodly people at that time. Plus, the Greek word for world is used to refer to local or relative areas. On top of this, there are indications in the flood account that it was just a regional event and not global. Genesis 8 records that the ark came to rest on a mountain, and then in verse 5 it says, And the waters continued to abate until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Okay, so at this point in the story, Noah can see the tops of mountains in the distance, or maybe close by. Then Noah lets out a raven, and then a dove. However, then it says in verse 8 to 9, Then he sent forth a dove from him, to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. Well, wait a minute, I thought verse 5 said the tops of the mountains were seen. But in verse 9, it says the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. If this literally means the whole planet, the passage contains a contradiction. But if it was just a regional flood, and verse 9 is talking about how the waters had not receded from the region, which was the entirety of the flood, the passage makes more sense. The waters had not receded from the whole land, which was originally flooded, but the mountains in the distance were still seen. This also makes sense with something that is said after this, where it says, the waters were dried off the earth. Okay, this obviously doesn't refer to the whole earth, because we still have massive oceans, but it would make sense if it refers to the regional area, and that the waters receded from that region, not the whole earth. Now, some global flood proponents respond to this by saying that when verse 5 says the tops of the mountains were seen, it refers to them being seen under the water. In other words, they finally became visible, but only below sea level. However, if this is true, and the water is still literally on the face of the whole earth in verse 9, that means in less than seven days, the waters receded to an elevation point where olive trees can naturally grow, and olive seed germinated, and sprouted and grew the tree quick enough so that leaves could form, so the dove could find it one week later. This would be impossible short of a miracle, which the text never indicates. So adding these additional assumptions to try and cling to a global flood are just absurd. The text is probably just talking about a regional flood, and it makes more sense with what is stated in verse 5 and verse 9. Thus, because of this, I would suggest the text makes more sense in speaking of a regional flood, not a global flood. Michael Heiser also draws attention to what happens immediately after the flood, which is an account of the Table of Nations, which only covers people who live in their geographical region. They had no knowledge of tribes on Australia or any who lived in the Americas, so they only seem focused on what is taking place in their geographical region which would contextualize the flood account. It was a regional flood, not something that extended to cover the whole earth. This fits well with Psalm 104, a psalm of creation, which explicitly states that when the continents first appeared, the face of the earth would never again be covered by water. So that would imply the later flood of Noah could not have covered the whole earth. Finally, John Walton and Trepper Longman Note the flood account is ambiguous about who survived. Other than the fact that the entire book of Genesis uses hyperbolic and exaggerated language at times, as we noted earlier, Genesis 7.23 uses an ambiguous word to talk about those who survived in the ark. The English says, only those with Noah survived. But this is not the word you would use if you explicitly wanted to say only those in the ark survived. The word is actually a little ambiguous. To quote, the word usually begins a clause, so comparable examples of the syntactical construction in Genesis 7.23 are difficult to identify. It regularly functions either as a severative or adversative. In either of those cases, however, the particle should have led the clause. In conclusion, both Hebrew and Akkadian texts are vague about the human survivors, which is no surprise since people would have only limited knowledge of populated areas across the known world. Thus, in conclusion, there is no reason to suggest the flood account 
necessarily must be understood as a global flood. The account seems to function within the local perspective and viewpoint of the original presenters and would not indicate the flood was global. Thus, Christians can follow the science wherever it leads.